Hello everyone. Today we are discussing the venous drainage of the face. This is a short essay question carrying 5 marks. So let us see how to present this answer. So if this question is asked in the exam, you will have to present under the following headings. You will give an introduction that the venous drainage of the face is carried out by which veins. You will say about the facial vein, where it is situated, how it is formed, its course and termination. You will write about the deep connections of the facial vein. You will write about the retromandibular vein, how it is formed and terminated. You will write about the applied aspects. Now to introduce the topic. The venous drainage of the face is mainly done by two veins, the facial vein and the retromandibular vein. So the vein you are seeing here that is the facial vein and the vein you are seeing here that is the retromandibular vein. So these two veins, they participate in the venous drainage of the face. Now we will see about the situation of the facial vein. You can already see here, this is the facial artery you are seeing. So our facial vein is situated behind the facial artery. And you can appreciate here that the facial vein, it is almost straight unlike the facial artery which is tortuous. And also the facial vein is superficial. It is superficial compared to that of the facial artery which is deeper. So that's about the situation of the facial vein. It is behind the facial artery. It is straight and superficial. Then we will say about the formation that how this facial vein is formed. So let us see here. There are two veins that is the supraorbital vein and the supratrochlear vein. Both this vein will join at the medial angle of the eye and form angular vein. So the formation of facial vein by the union of supratrochlear, supraorbital to form the angular vein where at the medial angle of the eye. Now we will say about the course of the facial vein. Now after its formation we already discussed that how it formed the angular vein at the medial angle of the eye. The facial vein it runs downwards and backwards behind the facial artery. It reaches the anterior inferior angle of the meseta. Now this point is important. Anterior inferior angle of the meseta where it is. The muscle you are seeing here that is the meseta. This is the anterior border of the meseta and this is the inferior aspect. So this is the anterior inferior angle of the meseta. So it comes here. This is the anterior inferior angle of the meseta. So what happens at this point it pierces the deep fascia, deep cervical fascia. Then what happens is after piercing the deep cervical fascia, it pierces the deep cervical fascia. Then it joins with anterior division of retromandibular vein to form the common facial vein and it will drain into internal jugular vein. So you can see here this vein here is retromandibular vein that will uh, divide into anterior division and posterior division. We will talk about this later. So that was about the course and termination of the facial vein. Now we will see about the deep connection of the facial vein. You can see here that the facial vein via the deep facial vein, the facial vein through the deep facial vein, it is connected with the pterygoid venous plexus and from the pterygoid venous plexus via the emissary vein, it is connected to the cavernous sinus. And also, the facial vein is connected to cavernous sinus through the angular vein and through superior ophthalmic vein. So, these are the deep connections of the facial vein. How it is connected to the cavernous sinus? So, via the angular vein, superior ophthalmic vein and deep facial vein and pterygoid venous plexus. Now, we will discuss about the retromandibular vein. How it is formed and where it is terminated. So, you can see a vein here which is a superficial temporal vein. Now, this superficial temporal vein, it joins with the maxillary vein within the parotid gland and it forms the retromandibular vein. 
This retromandibular vein divides into anterior division and posterior division. As already discussed, anterior division joins with the facial vein to, to form the common facial vein and it drains into internal jugular vein. The posterior division of retromandibular vein will join with the posterior auricular vein and it will form the external jugular vein. So that is about the retromandibular vein. So you can see here, it joins with the superficial temporal vein, enters the parotid gland, joins with the maxillary vein and form retromandibular vein, which divides into anterior and posterior division. As already discussed, anterior division joins the facial vein to form the common facial vein. Posterior division joins posterior auricular and it forms the external jugular vein. Now we discuss about the applied aspects of the facial vein. So, this area here that is the dangerous area of the face which includes upper lip area, lower aspect of the nose and the adjoining cheek. So, this area in the face is called as dangerous area. Why it is called dangerous area? Because if there is any infection in this area of the face, what happens is the muscles of facial expression are within the superficial fascia. So, when these muscles move or contract, a septic emboli from this infected area can dislodge. It can dislodge into the facial vein and through the deep facial vein, this septic emboli will reach the pterygoid venous plexus via the emissary vein. It can reach the cavernous sinus and cause thrombosis of cavernous sinus. The septic emboli can also reach the cavernous sinus via the angular vein, via the superior ophthalmic vein and it, it can also reach the cavernous sinus. So that is why the any infections from the dangerous area of the face via the facial vein, it can reach the cavernous sinus causing the thrombosis of cavernous sinus which is very fatal. So this is about the applied aspects of the facial vein. So that's all for this uh, topic. So you got to know how to present this answer. Thank you so much for watching this video.